Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Joan and this is Joan's Point at Plate. Today we will be doing some meal prepping. I will be making two different breakfasts. I will be making the egg bites in the Instant Pot, which I have made. It's, this is kind of actually like a rerun of a meal prep because everything I've made, I have made in previous videos. They're things that have been asked for again. Um, and since I don't do a lot of meal prep anymore, because I work from home, so I'm able to make my lunch different every day, um, and the same with my breakfast, but I do like to meal prep some breakfast for my husband to take to work and my son to heat up before he goes to school. So anyway, we're gonna be repeating one of the breakfasts. We're gonna be making egg bites in the Instant Pot. I made those in my very first meal prep video for YouTube. So we're gonna be making some of those, and we are going to be making the broccoli and I forget what it's called. I have to go pull out the card. The broccoli and cheese like crustless quiche that was on the weekly handout at the WW meeting two weeks ago. I'm going to be meal prepping that and I'm also going to be making my dinner for tonight which is chicken divan. A couple people asked me to make that on camera. It is ridiculously easy like ridiculous. It's it's pretty much all cans of soup and sliced cheese. It's It's very easy but it is my son's favorite and he's having his girlfriend over for dinner tonight. So that's what he asked for. Um, and I'm going to be making granola because I've had a lot of requests to do that again. So that is what I'm going to be making today. Oh, and I might throw in some banana bread, seeing how long this video goes and, um, you know, how my time goes today. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We are going to start with the chicken for the chicken divan. I am going to put that in the Instant Pot. And then we're going to make the granola. So let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, I have two and a half pounds of chicken in the Instant Pot on the trivet with one cup of chicken broth. And I'm just going to hit the pressure cook button. And it's going to do high pressure. And I'm going to do 12 minutes. That's all there is to it. It'll come up to pressure. And then it will cook for the t uh, 12 minutes. Then I'm going to let it naturally release. And then it will be ready to shred up. So for the granola recipe, it's kind of a loose recipe. Um, you can kind of mix and match everything in it to suit what you like. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're always start with oats. We're gonna start with four cups of old fashioned oats is what I like to use. This is a two cup measure. So we're gonna start with four cups of that, and that's your base. And then from there is where you can get creative if you like. I'm choosing to use a tablespoon of cinnamon. You can use whatever kind of spice you like. You can use pumpkin pie spice, you can use allspice, whatever you like. But I'm gonna use a tablespoon of cinnamon. And we also like nutmeg, so I am going to grate some fresh nutmeg in there, probably about a teaspoon or so. I honestly don't measure it. I just keep grating and grating and grating until I either grate my fingernail or until I think it's enough. Okay. And then I'm gonna start by adding walnuts. It's my nut of choice. So a quarter cup of walnuts is about 30 grams. So I put my bowl on my scale, change the measurement to grams, zeroed it out, and I'm just gonna shake in, actually, I should probably um, crush these up a little bit more. They're not as crushed as I'd like them, but you know what, it's okay. We're gonna just add in 30 grams. And there we go. And then next, what I'm going to do is some pepitas, some pumpkin seeds. And I'm also gonna do a quarter cup of that, which is 30 grams. And then the next thing I'm gonna add is some dried fruit. This, I have the dried mixed berries it's dried cranberries, dried cherries, and dried blueberries. I'm gonna add a quarter cup of that, which is 40 grams. So you have to watch when you go from cups to measure uh, to weighing things, because it's not always exactly the same. 
So we're going to add in, I'm going to zero out my scale and add in 40 grams of this. I'm not even sure I have that much in the bag. I'm going to break these up. They're a little stuck together. I really like this blend with the cherries and the berries, but the cherries are kind of big. I kind of wish they were cut up a little smaller and I'm really too lazy to do that. Exactly 41 grams in there, that works. Okay, so next, it calls for coconut, uh, any kind of oil you want, some kind of mild oil. Normally I use a tablespoon of coconut oil melted. My coconut oil is somewhere in this house. I usually store it in my downstairs overflow pantry, but I can't seem to find it. So I'm just gonna use canola oil. It's only a tablespoon, so it's not like you're getting a lot of flavor from it. It's just to help make things crunchy and crispy and help things bind together nicely. Before I added the oil, I meant to mix all the dry ingredients together. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is add some sweetener. My sweetener of choice is honey. Nothing more natural and basic than good old local honey. Pure natural raw honey from a local place near us. It is delicious. They make so many different flavors and it is all fantastic. This is just the Jersey Pine Barrens flavor. I really like the blue. I should probably use the blueberry flavor because Blueberry flavor is really, really sweet. So we're gonna use two tablespoons of that. Actually, I'm gonna look for the blueberry flavor and see if I have any. Okay, it appears I'm out of the blueberry flavor, so we'll just use this. My women's group at church partners with this local honey maker, beekeeper, and we actually sell jars of their honey at church for a fundraiser for our women's group. And we have one coming up, so I know what I will be buying, the blueberry honey. Okay, and then next, we need one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Like I said, you do not have to use vanilla. You can customize this any way you want. You can use almond extract or whatever you think is good. This is some homemade vanilla that I made in the Instant Pot. And then we will mix and mix and mix until it is all very well combined and coated. You really need to get that honey spread throughout all of the oats, really give it a good stir. Unlike a cake mix or muffins, you cannot over mix this. It smells very good. Now my disclaimer is every time I make this, it seems to yield a different amount. I am not sure why. I use the same measurements each time. So I do remeasure this at the very end when it's all done and recalculate the points if need be. I never use more than about a tablespoon of this over my yogurt because honestly, you really don't need it. You just need that little bit of flavor and that little bit of crunch. Okay, that looks good. So the last ingredient that I choose to use, little trick I learned a while ago when making granola, is to take an egg white that you've beaten until frothy, not like meringue frothy, um, but frothy enough, like that. It's actually settled a little bit now. Let me just <coughs> give it a little. And pour that right in. And give it a really good stir and make sure it is combined throughout. 
the egg white helps to bind the granola a little bit and it helps to give it the crunch. Now with granola, when it's done cooking and you take it out of the oven, do not be disappointed that it is still soft. Granola gets nice and crunchy as it cools. So it's gonna come out of the oven soft. Just leave it be and it will get crunchy. So there is our granola. I'm gonna spread this out onto two cookie sheets that I've sprayed with a little nonstick cooking spray. And I'm gonna put it in the oven at 300 degrees for a total of about 20 to 30 minutes. I check it and stir it every seven to eight minutes. I check the color to see if it's getting golden brown. And I like to stir it to keep it moving so the bottom doesn't get more brown than the top. So I'm just gonna put that on my trays and I'm gonna get that in the oven. Okay, so the next thing we will be making is the broccoli and cheddar frittata off of the weekly reader from WW from April 14th to the 20th. That looked really good. And it is only one smart point. So in this bowl, I have 11 eggs and I whisked them, whisked them, and then let them sit because we are going to go over to the stove and start everything over there. Okay, so in a 10 inch skillet, I'm gonna put one tablespoon of olive oil and heat it until it shimmers. It's a lot of olive oil. It's what the recipe called for. And then we are going to add in a chopped onion. It says a small onion. We're not huge onion fans. So this is probably a half of the small onion. And then that's gonna cook for about four minutes until it begins to soften over medium heat. I'll be back to show you what that looks like. Okay, once the onion starts to brown and is softened, we're gonna add in two cups of cooked chopped broccoli. And we're just gonna mix that in and we're gonna let that warm through for about two minutes. It's already cooked, so we don't have to worry about that, but it needs to be nice and warm through. So I'm gonna let that go for about two minutes and then show you the next step. Okay, once your broccoli is warm through, we're gonna season it up with some salt and pepper. And then we are going to pour in the eggs. Now the directions say to gently push the eggs around from the edges to the center and making all the liquid fill in the empty spots when you push. And it's sticking. I am not a fan of these copper pans. I really wanted to like it, but I really don't. Even from the it's from the beginning, it's been not very non-stick, if that makes sense. So I'm hoping it actually comes out of here when it's done in the oven. I'm a little bit skeptical. Might be cutting it right in the pan instead of sliding it out like you're supposed to. And this has to cook for about four minutes before it goes in the oven. So I'll be back. Okay, the eggs are mostly set and now I'm gonna take a half a cup of cheese. The recipe calls for the Mexican blend reduced fat. This is the Cabot 75% reduced fat sharp cheddar that I like so much. So we're just gonna sprinkle a half a cup of that right over the top. Turn the heat off and we're gonna put this in a 400 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes until it is slightly soft in the center. I really have not good feelings about this coming out of the pan. Okay, the frittata is out of the oven. This is what it looks like, it looks pretty good. So I am just gonna get it out of the pan. 
put it out onto a cutting board, let it cool, cut it into six equal portions, and put it in the meal prep containers for breakfast. Each portion is one smart point each. Okay, next up are the egg bites in the Instant Pot. You can also make these in the oven. I will link the recipe down below in the description box for the oven also. Um, what we have in the blender is six eggs. I'm going to add three ounces of the 75 produce, reduced fat Cabot cheese. And then we need to add 169 grams of cottage cheese. That's about three quarters of a cup. Hundred sixty seven, close enough. And then we need to add three quarters of a cup of Greek yogurt, plain non fat. And then to that, it calls for a teaspoon of salt. I'm only going to do about a half a teaspoon. And then we put the lid on and let it blend for about 30 <laughs> seconds. I stop it about halfway and scrape down the sides. You probably don't need to do this in some like newfangled fancy blender, but this thing's, this was a, I think a bridal shower gift. So it's like 30 years old. Okay. And there is our egg mixture. I will show you what we do to fill the egg molds. Okay. So to prepare the egg cups, um, what, I'm, uh, what I chose to put in them this time is chopped up Canadian bacon and chopped up mushrooms. So I'm just going to, this is three slices of Canadian bacon, which is one freestyle smart point. So I'm just going to eyeball it and divide them between the 14 cups. I probably could have got away with two pieces. but that's okay. Two pieces and three pieces are the same amount of smart points. So using that extra piece, we'll just make them meatier and not change the points. And then I'm gonna take the mushrooms and do the same thing. These are cooked mushrooms that have been sauteed previously. I try to do a container of mushrooms every week. We like to have them in our eggs I like to keep them in there. Okay, <coughs> so we've got our mushrooms and our Canadian bacon in our cups. And now we're just gonna take the egg mixture and we're gonna fill them about, fill them about three quarters of the way full. And I'll be back to show you what we do with them. Okay, our eggs are all divided. I am just gonna pop the lids on. The recipe I have says not to use the lids. It says to use aluminum foil. But last time I used the lids and they came out perfect. So why waste aluminum foil if I don't have to? Just make sure the lids are all the way on. You kind of have to ease them on a little bit. Because they are a nice tight fit. And then I am going to stack them on the trivet, offsetting them just a little bit. Put the trivet right in the pot. Put our lid on, close the steam valve. And then I am going to hit the pressure cook button, the steam button, set it for eight minutes and off it will go.
I will show you what they look like when they come out. Okay, next up is banana bread. If you know me, you know this is an absolute staple in our house. We absolutely love it. Um, and it's something I keep on hand all the time in case I get snacky. And I love having a little piece with my afternoon tea. So we have in this bowl four bananas. I already took the mixer and mashed them up. Make sure they're nice and ripe bananas. So they're already pulverized in there. And to that, I'm gonna add one cup of quick cook oats. You can use old fashioned, but if you use the old fashioned, put them through the blender first uh, to break them down a little bit. You get a much better texture. Oh, by the way, I am timesing this recipe by four. The original recipe is written to make one mini loaf. I do it times four to make four of these. And one mini loaf is two smart points. I cut them in half for one smart point serving because it's more than enough. And then I'm gonna do four eggs. And then I'm going to do a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then some nutmeg, like I said before, I just grate until it gets too small to hold and until it looks and smells good. Then I'm gonna do two tablespoons of vanilla. And then that was supposed to be two teaspoons of vanilla. I screwed that up. That's okay. It's all good. Just be really vanilla-y. And then I'm going to do two teaspoons of baking powder. Mix it with the electric mixer. mix it for a good two minutes. The more you mix it, the more air that's incorporated and the higher it will rise, the fluffier it will be. Um, now, a lot of people complain that this recipe is not sweet enough. They want a nice sweet banana bread. I personally like it like this, but when you're adding all the other dry ingredients, you most certainly can add the sweetener of your choice, um, whether it be swerve or uh, stevia, stevia or Truvia, whatever you like, you can certainly add a couple packets or a couple teaspoons of that in there to make it sweeter. But like I said, I kind of like it just the way it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this out on my scale, divide it by four and fill my pans and get those in the oven. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. This measured out to be 700 grams, so we will be putting 175 grams in each pan. Close enough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top, oh, that went back down again. I'm going to top each one with 16 Lily's chocolate chips. You can have 15 or 16 of these for zero smart points of the Lily's brand. and they will go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Okay, egg bites are out of the Instant Pot and I am just going to turn them out 
onto a cooling rack and get them nice and cool before I put them in our meal prep containers. The beauty of these is you can make them any flavor you want. I just wanted to use up the mushrooms that I had. That's why I chose to do the mushroom and Canadian bacon. They are also absolutely delicious with spinach and feta or um, some chopped up red and green peppers in the bottom. Anything you can think of, you can put in these. You just need to adjust the points accordingly if you are using ingredients that have points. These come out to, the way these are made, two are one smart point and four are two smart points. So that is the point breakdown on these, the way they are made. You get your points from the cheddar cheese, the cottage cheese, and the little bit of Canadian bacon that is in there. But they are a fantastic deal. Point-wise, they are so delicious. They're, they're like nothing, if you've never had these before, they're like nothing you've ever tasted. Well, they're actually like the Starbucks um, sous vide eggs is what they're a copycat of. Um, I never had those at Starbucks. I've only had mine and they are so creamy and so delicious and so filling. They're, they're wonderful. So it absolutely makes my Instant Pot worth every penny. Um, between that and hard boiling eggs and the chicken, I'll show you the chicken. I'm gonna get ready to make dinner. The chicken in the Instant Pot, I really do as much as I complained the other night in my dinner prep video about making the Salisbury steak meatballs in it, that it took a while, there are certain things I just absolutely love in my Instant Pot and the egg bites, the chicken, the hard boiled eggs are one of them. Um, I have the Instant Pot six quart. I do have it linked below in the description box if you're interested in it. Check it out on Amazon and that's it. I'm gonna let these cool and I will get all the meal prep containers ready shortly, but first I'm gonna show you how I'm putting my chicken divan together for dinner tonight. And last but not least, we are preparing dinner. This is my youngest son's absolute favorite. It's called chicken divan. It is ridiculously simple. Um, there are much more involved recipes out there. Personally, I would like to do one from scratch. I would like to make my own sauce. I would like to use a different kind of cheese. This is the one my family likes, made with canned soup and good old American cheese sliced at the deli. So without further ado, let's get this chicken divan made. First thing we're gonna do, we have two cans. Now this is the Aldi brand, the Fit and Active uh, cream of chicken soup. You can use the Campbell's brand or whatever kind of can there is, as long as it's like the healthy choice or, um, I forget what they call it. We're gonna take about a third of the can and we're just gonna spread it in the bottom to make the base. We should have something better to spread this with, like an angled spreader. And then we are going to take half of the chicken. This is the chicken I cooked earlier in the Instant Pot. And um, I just cubed it up. Actually, I just broke it up. It comes out so nice in the Instant Pot. I was just able to break it up with my hands. So we're gonna take about half of that, lay it on top of the soup. The banana bread's done. I need to pause and I will be right back. Okay, sorry for the interruption, but like I always say, real life around here. Okay, now I'm gonna take half of the broccoli and just sprinkle that right on top. I told you guys, gourmet meal at its finest in our house tonight. And then I'm going to take some of my cheese. This is about five and a half ounces of just cheese I got sliced right at the deli. It's 12 slices. Now back in the days before WW, I used a heck of a lot more cheese. I used probably about eight ounces, but we all know that cheese is a little spendy when it comes to your points, so. And then we're going to top it with more soup, more of our gourmet sauce, we should call it. The rest of one can, and about a quarter or a third of the other. Yeah. 
and then chicken. The rest of the broccoli. This broccoli is cooked, by the way. It was just frozen broccoli that I steamed in the microwave and chopped up. Then the rest of the cheese. And then last but not least, the rest of the soup. This will go into the oven at 325 for about 30, 35 minutes until it's nice and heated through and bubbly. We like to serve it over rice with a vegetable and crescent rolls on the side. There it is, our chicken divan or as we like to call it in our house, Adam's favorite. So once this is, once it's dinner time and this is all plated up, I will show you what it looks like. This makes six servings at six points per serving. So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna get out my containers and fill the containers with the breakfast prep that we did. And here are the completed breakfast meal preps. This is my husband's. He gets four egg bites and just two of the Jimmy Dean regular sausages and a piece of the broccoli quiche with two of the Jimmy Dean sausages. In mine, I have one of the broccoli quiches and one link of the Aldi Never Any Chicken Sausage for one point. So this is a total of two smart points for breakfast. And then for the eggs, the egg bites, I have three in mine for two smart points and one link of sausage for one smart point. So these are three smart point breakfasts for me. Then there were two extra of the quiches that I'm just gonna keep home and heat up for my son in the morning before he leaves for school. So there is our breakfast prep. And let me show you what the banana bread looks like. Here is the banana bread. It's still hot, so I don't want to cut it yet. But what I'll do is I'll cut each loaf in half and each piece will be one freestyle smart point for a lovely afternoon snack with a cup of tea or coffee. I will be back in a bit to show you what the plated up dinner looks like. And all plated up, I have three quarter cup of rice for four smart points and one sixth of the casserole dish for six smart points, cauliflower for zero. So this is a 10 point dinner. And I also just remembered, I forgot to show you the granola, so I will put a picture in at the end. Okay, I said I would be back to show you the granola and I will turn the camera around and show it to you. But if you got this far in this crazy long video, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, this was kind of a rerun. I made a lot of the same things over and over, but that's okay. Um, that's it for me. I'll show you the granola and thank you for watching. Don't forget, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. And I will be back to you actually tomorrow um, or Tuesday on the 30th. Uh, there'll be a collab coming out that I'm in with about 11 other ladies. It's a fun one. One grocery bag for five dinners. Um, so make sure you check that out tomorrow, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And I will be back on Wednesday with a what I eat in a day. And that's it for me. Have a fantastic day. And here's what the granola made. It is, it made an entire mason jar plus another little container with another serving in it. Um, you can hear, it's nice and crunchy. It is one of our absolute favorite recipes. So let me know if you decide to make it, if you gave it a try, how it turned out for you and all that good stuff. See you later.